understand they're bringing out something. Hello, everybody. My name is Jacob Wolf and Christopher Hoisington. We're here with Alan Scully. 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 Yes. He's an artist extraordinaire. I mean, we're in his uh, studio apartment, and the man is surrounded by his work. Take a look around. All right. We're just gonna do a little pan. This of... is the Art Life Video Blog. This is day number forty-five, and uh, Alan Scully is the is the man of the day. This is very, I mean, out of all the artists that we've interviewed so far, this man is as immersed in his work as he possibly can be. And this is a tiny space, and it's just full of, of things that he's done. How many pieces do you think you have here? Um, well, there's stuff, that, the closets are stuff full of uh, other stonework. And with this, I figured um, at least maybe 200 or more. At wow. least. There's yeah, at least 200 would... in this room alone. There's at least 200 in this room alone. How often do you, are you creating a new piece? Um, I try to, I work every day, and there are days I can do, I do three to five, because you know, I just keep working, and my big influence are the person I'm trying to catch is Andy Warhol, because he would always, uh, whenever Lou Reed was sitting at the factory, he would come down from his painting upstairs or silk screening, and he'd say, well, how many songs did you write? And Lou said, well, you know, he told later, he said, I, had, I hadn't written anything. So I told him I wrote five. And he would stare at me and say, you should have written ten. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be young forever. So you're a big fan of uh, Andy Warhol and the uh, Velvet Underground. Yes. And uh, Raymond know, Chandler. Raymond Chandler. Yeah. Who, down, the mean, down these mean streets, a man must go who is not himself mean. Uh, he actually painted that quote behind him there. He's got a Raymond Chandler series. The one next to it is uh, a title of one of his books. What are what are these uh, these pieces for? You said they're part of an upcoming noir gallery, right? Right, uh, Splendiporium, which is a gallery in the southeast, uh, two blocks off Powell. 3421 Southeast 21st. Not that I'm plugging it, but the you show. absolutely should Please plug do. it. Yeah, uh, it starts uh, Friday, January 9th, and runs for that month. And so basically, I, I just trying to do a theme. I did a whole theme on the tarot earlier. A tarot? The tarot cards. Yeah. We yeah. actually have a project that we've developed for this year, and we've made a pact with two of our roommates to create tarot decks for yeah. each other. Because because we know you're not supposed to go out and get your own or make your own. You have to exchange them with somebody. So we made a, an agreement on video with two of our roommates to have tarot cards by the end of uh, 2015, yeah. which is really interesting. So you have a series on the tarot cards. Um, yeah, they're here somewhere. Somewhere. I so, so I, I'm I, telling you, this place is stuffed full of art. There are six pieces that I think include some of the tarot up in a place called Cathalamet, Washington. Okay. Which is on the Columbia River somewhere. And I concluded there are planets closer than Cathalamet. <laughs> and I've never been to the gallery because there's, I don't have a car and there's no way to get there. And so I just know that some pieces are up there, and there's also two pieces right now at the Red and Black Cafe, which was highly interesting to uh, be in, because it's for um, Occupy Portland. Uh -huh. They're a benefit for them to okay. sell, and you know, it was really interesting meeting sort of anarchist folks. And kind of like, oh, okay, this is cool. How, <laughs> how, do, you, how do you organize if you're an anarchist? <laughs> so what is it about uh, Raymond Chandler that you love? Uh, the fact that Marlowe was this outsider who still tried to enforce, you know, goodness and uh, decency. And like uh, he said in this essay, this came from, uh -huh. uh, he's a man that just despises sham and pettiness and uh, is a man of honor. Right. Yeah. Raymond Chandler wrote the uh, Philip Marlowe series. Um, well, there's, a, there's a bunch of... Uh, there's a series of novels, detective novels, right. based on Philip Marlowe. And back in the 50s and 60s... Uh, Actually, he first wrote, the first one came out in 1939. Really? The Big Sleep. And that was, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, that was made into a film with Bogart. Bogart, that's the one and I was recall. trying to think of. Yeah. yeah, and then they screwed up the ending. As the ending is Marlowe going, he sleeps the big sleep, the long sleep. You know, he just went to this whole thing of a, you know, metaphors for death. Uh -huh. And 
uh, it was because there's this, myth, there's this guy, this Irishman, who was a friend of the old colonel, who's now described himself as the uh, tattered remnants of a wild life. Did Which, you like the movies, or do you prefer the novels? I prefer the novels because the movies tended to cut things out. Yeah. And um, The Big Sleep, William Faulkner wrote part of the screenplay, got okay. a great deal of it. Uh, Raymond Chandler was hanging around, and they have, you had the greatest drinkers Hollywood has ever seen. And they, were, they admitted there's a section of the film, they have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> they have no idea. And James so, Garner was the, uh, well, the original was Humphrey Bogart, right, and uh, then James Garner took over after Humphrey, and he did three or four of them, right? Yeah, I believe so. That was so. the first uh, appearance of Bruce Lee was in one of those Marlowe movies in the 60s. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to me when I read, when I read the novels is uh, martial arts. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, that's it. <laughs> no, The Long Goodbye was my next favorite novel by him, and then he goes into... Um, Farewell, My Lovely, which has a great beginning, because there's this uh, sort of guy just got out of prison. He's been, he's a big, he's a big man. He's an enforcer, and he goes to this uh, dance hall where he fell in love with one of the dancers, you know, um, and he's looking for her. But now, the uh, dance hall is in the segregated time it was written in the 40s. Mm -hmm. Is now run is now for black folk, and so he goes in and gets in a tussle. And Marlow happens to lock in. There's sort of this. Sometimes you have to really stretch the limits of belief. But that was an interesting book. Yeah, James Garner died this year. Rest in peace. Yes. Um, yes. Great actor. Great actor. So did Joe Cocker last week. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yeah, age of seventy. Rest in peace, Joe Cocker. Uh, so this is basically what I do. Uh, I've been lucky to have the time. He's also a big fan of. Uh, Racing, especially the local Portland uh, PIR, he volunteers down there, and he uh, he does the start finish, and he got hit by a mo motorcyclist. What was when? When did that happen? Uh, let's see. Well, let's see. One that accident happened in August. Then I was trying out a friend's bike, and kind of uh, discovered the front wheel was not what it should have been. So that kind of threw me over the handlebars. I didn't really get, uh, I mean, I hit the grass, which was fine, except I found the one stone in the entire field, and, uh, yeah. So in the in the accident at PIR, you broke a few ribs? Uh, three ribs, ribs number five, six, and seven, and cracked two lower vertebrae in the back. Apparently the person hit uh, a well, concrete he, post on the guardrail that you were he, standing near? Well, he came over the guardrail, and I was standing and staring at my uh, little, computer lab thing and just really engrossed in it and all of a sudden I realized there's a motorcycle coming over a guardrail and I am in the way. So he hit me and which was okay. Then I hit the concrete barrier. But then the, the piece de resistance was going over the barrier and landing on the track oh. on my head. I'm gonna go to use the restroom down the hall. Okay. Yeah so uh, the smallest bladder in the world. The smallest bladder in the world is going out the door.